Good morning, my creative friends. <clears throat> Sorry, little froggy this morning. This is Dr. Manette Riordan. This is Painting in Your PJs Live with Manette, where I am all about intuitive art practices, whether it's painting, collage, watercolor play. I love and am passionate about art journaling, but all of them in service to our own personal growth and self-discovery. There is nothing greater than the ability to go within and sometimes it's really hard to go within and we've spent most of our lives being taught how valuable our head is and how important it is to think our way through things and then there come those times when you just can't think your way through and it's essential to find more playful and curious ways to reconnect with the innermost parts of ourselves and i find that as women when we hit midlife we have an even deeper longing to reconnect to our own self. So I'm 58 and I found myself in my 50s in this quest for who am I really and who is that woman in the mirror? Do I know her and am I really connecting and engaged with myself? Am I feeling fully embodied in every aspect of my life? Am I feeling vibrant and radiant, which is how I wanna feel going through my life? And so this show is all about how to really make art the tool that helps us on that journey of self-discovery and personal growth. And there's a lot of different ways to do that. Right now in the series, I'm sharing my morning art activation process, which is how I connect to myself and my feelings every single morning before I get my day started. And then <clears throat> I have fun workshops like this one. I'm doing a workshop called the Mythical Makeover Experience that starts on June 21st, and it's inspired by the books of Nancy Drew, which were super, super important to me on my, um, as a child, it was the first set of books that I owned. You know, owning books was pretty precious when we were kids. We went to the library a lot. We borrowed books, but my grandmother gifted me a whole set of the Nancy Drew books. And so they've had a fond place in my heart my whole life. And I lost my set because we lost our house to fire when I was in seventh grade. And I have never lost my fondness, though, for Nancy Drew. I recently reread the first book in the series. And you can find the link to the Mythical Makeover experience in the description of this video. And one of the bonus videos is how to take an old book like this one and to turn it into a traveler's style notebook. I love this style of notebook, mostly because the signatures come out and you can work in them. You can replace them when they're full. They have these lovely elastics in them, which make them really fun to work in. I'm a huge fan of the traveler's notebooks. Good morning, Tori. Blanca, I love that you're with me on this life quest for sure. So if you're curious about how to use mysteries and young detectives at a, as a metaphor for becoming the detective of your own life, I want to invite you to join me in the Mythical Makeover Experience. And again, that link is in the description of the video, not in the comments, but in the description. So this week I am sharing about my morning art activation process Good morning, Mary, and how I connect to myself, to my feelings, and just get my day jump-started with what I like to call creative play and creative expression. So I'm gonna switch screens here. And I started this canvas a couple of days ago on Tuesday, and it has changed dramatically over the last couple of days. And this morning I took an oil pastel and I started to just do some writing over the surface of this. I have taken pictures of the canvas, don't worry. Part of what I love about working on canvas, I do this process a lot in my journal page by page, but when I'm doing it on canvas, it forces me to learn to let go of whatever it is that I'm holding on to. And for me, this painting over paintings is a beautiful way of really exploring areas of my life where I'm feeling resistance, where I'm holding on too tightly, where I'm caught up in expectations instead of just being in the flow. So this version of my morning art activation process is one of my favorite ways of reconnecting to myself 
and to my body. And so again, I'm just simply going to start with drawing some shapes on here. Those circles are coming back. I'm still, you know, having lots of these circles on here. I think how I'm feeling this morning, I'm feeling very flexible and loose. I did a beautiful workout this morning and some stretching and a little bit of breathing. So my body feels great. I had a decent night's sleep. Good morning, Elena, my beautiful friend. So happy to see you here. It's early for you. Love that you're here with us. And I'm also feeling energized. I was rereading a book called Essentialism this morning for a group discussion a little bit later. And it has some really similar ideas to your brain on art, which we've been talking about this week at all. <clears throat> and so I'm also in a lot of curiosity this morning. So it feels like a lot of ideas are really sparking. And so I wrote that in words. And when I think about those ideas sparking, you know, it kind of almost feels like maybe some lightning. And so we can activate a canvas simply by coming in with just really putting some marks down. I don't even care about the color because this is all going to get painted over. I intentionally chose a couple of brighter colors because I may want to have them show through. This whole thing is going to get gessoed over here in just a minute. But I'm definitely feeling energized and curious and like all the synapses in my brain are firing in a healthy way. Yesterday, if you remember, I was feeling more scattered and like there were too many tendrils in too many ways. But today, this theme of play is what is on my mind and the value of play and the, the hard lessons that we have to learn when we don't make time for play. Play is the number one way that we learn, not just humans, but animals also. And yet, by the time we start school, we're taught that play is frivolous, that it's not a great use of our time. It's actually, it's trivial, meaningless, and yet nothing happens and we don't learn as well when we aren't playing, right? So when we're just in rote memorization or trying too hard to think things through, we can get so caught up and I do this too and I'm thinking too hard and I know that if I just let go and allow myself to play and explore different opportunities, then something magical is going to happen. Just like I know something magical is going to happen with this canvas, even though at the moment <clears throat> I have absolutely no idea what that might be. And I'm wishing I brought some stencils over because I'm kind of feeling like a stencil would be a fun next step. So bear with me for just a second. I'm going to walk over to the other side of my studio here and just quickly grab... A couple of stencils. Stencils are a great way to cover up parts of paintings, but not whole paintings. All right, I'm grabbing the two right off the top of the stack. Interesting, I grabbed a, a winter themed stencil. And that's all right. So lots of leaves and pine cones, which, you know, I see year round here, but it also has some little poinsettia like flowers. I also grabbed this one which is a favorite textural one so again i'm really trusting my intuition here i am not driving the process i i don't have kind of a step-by-step -step way of approaching the page i have you know a series of things that i like to include and they don't all get included every time and it's going to be really in interesting continuing to build up on this particular canvas. So I'm letting go of whatever's there, bringing in something completely new and different. Because there's a ton of texture. Yesterday was all about laying in those thick layers of texture. I'm not feeling the need to use every part of the stencil. You can see where it's mixing with that part in the center there that's kind of busy. I didn't get a lot of the, the pattern, but I got some white down on there. And I'm just using a makeup sponge and some white acrylic paint. And I'm just making a mess, right? And when I think about what it takes to 
learn to be a mixed media artist is we have to be willing to play. We have to be willing to play with our materials. We have to be willing to waste materials. We have to be willing to explore and try different things. And we absolutely have to be willing to fail. We absolutely have to be willing to fail. And I wouldn't actually call it a failure. It's all a learning opportunity, right? You know, every time something doesn't come out the way that we want, we know not to try that again, that we need to either practice more or try something different. So here we have just a super, super messy canvas, but it does feel like that sort of you know, inner creative chaos that I'm personally feeling right now in a good way. Sometimes that gets overwhelming and it feels awful and I'm desperate for clarity. And then sometimes what I notice, I'm thinking I want to put some, maybe some black on here. And then sometimes what I notice, it's like this, the creative connections are firing faster than I can track them. And so I just notice what does the chaos feel like? If, I, if that's how I'm feeling, how does it feel? Does it have, feel good? Does it feel bad? Yesterday, it just felt like chaos, like there was nothing useful or beneficial in the chaos. But today, it feels a lot more like there's something useful happening, and I'm starting to see some connections. And what I love about this type of creative play and I call it creative play, free play, is there's no destination. I'm not trying to get anywhere. I'm not trying to paint anything representational. I'm not trying to make it look like something, right? The, the, the reason that I am here is just to be engaged in my own creative play and process. Because my answers will come as I allow myself to just be here and play. And when I'm doing this by myself, I'm doing it in silence. I always have a little journal or notebook or scrap piece of paper around because I know those ideas are going to come as long as I just stay open to them. On my easel right now is a big wolf painting that I started. Completely different intention. I know exactly what I'm painting. I know where I'm going. I love the, that pine cone image. I know exactly what it is that I'm trying to paint. And I can feel the, the difference in the energetics of painting something intentional and representational. I have that, but good morning, good morning. Haha. <laughs> um, thank you, Marion. And I have that vision in my head, and we talked a little bit about this yesterday. I have this preconceived notion of what I want this wolf to look like, right? So I can feel there's a little bit of stress. And uh, can I do it? Can I actually paint that? Can I make this happen and look like what I want it to, to look like? And I notice the difference in when I allow myself to just sit down and play first. And the wolf is on like its third version. It was a canvas that was gifted to me by my friend Dina, and she had started a wolf painting on it, and then I painted over her painting. So I stayed in play for a long time, and then yesterday I committed to the size, the shape, even to the colors of the wolf. And you can just, I could instantly feel the, the difference in what happened in my body when I started then to get into the, oh, the eyes aren't quite right, and no, I didn't get this shape down right. And so my whole system shifts into that inner critic and that judgment, the voice of judgment becomes much louder and I'm okay with that because I'm learning to paint and draw all the time. I'm getting better. You know, that, that voice is helping me to see and look at things differently. It's interesting. This is wanting to be really dark this morning. So coming in with a lot of that blacks, just letting that happen. And so I'm very present right now to the difference between these two different paintings that I'm working on. And what I love about this particular practice is it's free play versus a guided piece of art, right? And the more that we give ourselves permission to be in abstract free play, the more we can connect to our own intuitive wisdom and knowing. 
it allows us to trust the process. The first canvas started this way, it just didn't end that way. And so being aware of when your preconceived notions of what something should look like get in the way. When you get too caught up in the perfectionism, it means you've lost connection with play. And when you lose connection with play, you lose connection also with curiosity and with possibility and with that just ability to try something new without any fear. I don't know why, but this is asking to have copper painted over it, maybe because it had some copper underneath as I'm looking at the piece. I'm just in that inquiry of, okay, what's next? And I'm trusting whatever arises. I'm trusting whatever arises. Before I put that copper on here, I'm gonna get this nice and dry. How's everyone doing this morning? I'd love to hear some other voices. What are you working on? Are you sipping a cup of coffee this morning? The thicker the paint goes on, then I notice the longer it takes to dry. And it's actually been humid here because I've had so much rain, so my paint isn't drying as fast as it normally does. Even the process of drying is valuable and beneficial. As I'm drying, I'm looking at the different parts of the image, the texture, right? I'm noticing the, the blues peeking through and some of the purple that's still here and those blues and purples and greens that the color palette is wanting to stay very much the same this week, which is interesting. And I'm wondering what would happen if maybe I forced myself to go in a little different direction. And so I've been in sort of this cutting out collage elements, aqua zumba. Oh my gosh, Tori, that sounds amazing. I love it. That sounds so fun. And, uh, looking at this going what if what i want to call in so what i painted out was a lot of this creative chaos a lot of these different ideas again a lot of nature images and what's moving in one direction or another and what i want is maybe a little coherence right maybe i want to feel a little less scattered and so i can just think about that right i'm going to make sure i get all the black off of there and think about what would it feel like to paint cohesiveness instead of chaos. And instantly what comes to me is orbs, right? So there's the, the circle, the sacred circle, the shape of the sacred circle that represents the whole and all of the parts and might help me just start to maybe put some structure around some of those feelings. And again, none of the feelings are bad. The, the one thing I want to you know, always reiterate is all my feelings are welcome here. And this week, you know, the, the feelings have pretty much been good, but they aren't always, right? Um, also feeling like I just caught this little pink out of the corner of my eye here. And I'm wondering if I want to get a little pink in here to start me going in a different direction, even though that's not what I'm seeing in my mind's eye for some reason. I felt called to just add a little bit of pink around the edges. It doesn't even matter why. I think pink is one of those just beautiful spring colors. There's a lot of things blooming that are pink. We had beautiful, all the ornamental fruit trees. But there's still, you know, a lot of things going on. So I want to start to pull this together with some kind of sacred circle in the center. And I'm going to start with some white, and we're just going to see where we get to. And the more that you engage in this practice, I have lost all of my paintbrushes. All righty then. There they are on the other table, where my wolf painting is. I always think I'm ready in the mornings, and then I get down here and I keep moving things around from one side of the studio to the other. So I'm gonna grab a couple of brushes here, feeling like a nice big brush, even intuitively feeling into your, what size of brush, right? Is this gonna be something that needs to be big? 
and I'm going to fill this page with as much of that orb as I can. And I want the chaos to stay on the outside, not the inside. And remember, when you're painting in layers like this, it's always great if there's a lot of color underneath to put a layer of white before you add your bright colors so that you can get that vibrancy that you're looking for. But I'm not wanting to cover all of it up either. Right? Not wanting to cover all of it up either. I played with some gouache last week on, you know, one of the calls, and I haven't picked it up since. It's one of those tools that definitely feels like it's going to require a little bit more experimentation for me. And what I'm feeling called to next, and I've been having a lot of fun with my Derwent ink tents lately, so I've been experimenting with different things, right? Uh, good morning, Leslie. So I'm being feel, I am feeling called to yellow next because yellow feels like bringing some light to all the chaos, right? Like I'm starting to see some of the interconnectedness of things. So again, I there's you know no destination in mind. I'm just here in the moment with the process. And next week, I'm going to work in an art journal again. I have one that's been lying empty that is just begging for some attention. And I would sh I'm going to show how I would do my morning art activation process, sort of page by page. What does that look like on a normal morning? I'm not always painting over and over canvas. So loving already the brightness and lightness of this, but I can still see all the, the grungy bits that are underneath. Right, this is feeling busy and disconnected from the yellow and wanting to get calmed down. So I'm going to grab, I think some maybe some dark blue to start. It may get lightened up a little bit later, but what's feeling good right now is this. This is like my new favorite blue. Is I love this dark Prussian blue. Get my brush nice and clean. And switching up brushes as you're doing this process is also really a great way to just notice the differences in the marks. I bet that looks black almost on the screen, doesn't it? But it's actually this really beautiful, rich, rich blue. Again, not going for 100% coverage, just going for... So some transparency is good because all that beautiful, rich layers that I painted are underneath and they're all telling the story of me and how I've felt this week and the journey that I have been on. Let it flow maybe into that yellow just a little bit. Let those blend. Even the action of painting in a circle feels wonderful, right? It feels wonderful. It feels there's something about that motion of movement and energy. We talked a little bit yesterday about, you know, how our creative play, whether we're painting or drawing, can, be, can become a somatic release, right? Like the notice the movements that feel good to your work as you go along. Oh, Elena, I'm so glad to hear you're back to art journaling. That's awesome. The only structure is to do something every day. Yep, lay down a layer of paint. Yep, I love that. Little collage, beautiful. Added a stencil. I love it. No pressure, no pressure. I'm glad to see you getting reconnected to your art. I was uh, watching someone else's video this morning, and it reminded me so much of your beautiful glyphs that you create. All right. 
and I'm feeling the fun of just wanting to continue to add to the circle. What I'm noticing is I've got more blue down there than here. So somehow this is feeling like the top and this is feeling like the bottom. Again, it doesn't matter. Just noticing it's maybe wanting some more white, a little more color. And interestingly, it's not wanting a lot of detail, right? It's not, yeah, when you get connected to the products, it changes everything, doesn't it? It's why I let go of selling art. If art sells, it's always fun, but I'm never intentional about it. So for me, it's so much more important to be, um, <laughs> it's all good, Elena. It's all good. I'm glad you captured it all. Again, just being in the simplicity and the clarity. It's not wanting a lot of detail. You guys know how much I love detail and I can see myself, oh, turning this into this or to that. And what it's wanting is just to be what it is, like this clear orb of energy. And um, it wants some more color, but not a lot of color. And I have this, I don't know how much this is gonna show up on the screen, so we'll see. This is a pearlescent white, and maybe we're going to just let it get a little bit shiny here on the surface. And it's not surprising. I went from all of that chaos to what now feels both bright and calm at the same time, right? This is what my, my heart and my brain are longing for, is this sense of wholeness and integration rather than a bazillion disparate ideas, right? How can we start to bring all of this together? And it's the, the inquiry that I've been in in my business for a few weeks now. There's some, some changes coming to my programming in all the best ways, right? And um, some upgrading in my, just in myself that then requires some upgrading in my messaging. And it has to come to completeness. It's been very fragmented in my head for a while. And I'm always looking for that way to make things, bring them back to, you know, the sort of wholeness for myself. And this pearlescent white is so pretty. I love it. Super sparkly and shiny. And I think I even want to brighten up this blue which feels like that circle is radiating its light out into the world, which is always my intention. Like one of my new clients asked this week, she said, you know, how can I feel most aligned in my work, be of service and make great money? And I thought that was like such a great question to ask, right? We always want to feel aligned in the work that we do, whether that's in our career, whether that's, you know, in a job working for someone else, a business that we own, or just in our personal lives and volunteerism, right? How can we feel most aligned in the work and what we're putting out? Okay, I'm starting to feel there's going to be a happy little birdie sitting in the center here. Thank you, Tori. I have a new program that's coming. I'll be sharing more about it after the, the next Mythical Makeover experience is complete called Finding You. That I'm super, super excited about. All right, just noticing the colors mixing and blending and shifting. And just as I'm sitting here painting, I just had this vision of the of a silhouette of uh, a bird sitting. Maybe there's going to be a branch across here. So it's always interesting to me how sometimes they want to stay abstract, sometimes a... There is a figurative image that will come, just pop into my head. And it might be an owl. 
or maybe a nightingale. I don't even know what a nightingale looks like, but just again, noticing what popped into my head. But I love how, and both the images that popped into my head are, are like nocturnal birds, right? All right. So it's feeling pretty good. I'm wanting to put a, maybe a little bit of the gold in here. Yvonne Mythical Makeover is a four-day um, online workshop I'm getting ready to teach. It's like three days of lessons and then one of my mini retreats. The link is in the description of the video. And I shared at the very beginning of this video about it as well. And it's being inspired uh, by the Nancy Drew series, which was my favorite series when I was a, a kid. And so the theme of, I've done this, is my second mythical makeover, and this one is all about becoming the detective of your own life. And how can we take some clues from Nancy Drew, who was all about actually social justice and service, even in the 1930s. This was first published in the 1930s. And, you know, be inspired to just really reflect on our own inner life, what it is that we're creating, who do we want to be. So there's going to be short recorded lessons the first three days with a series of clues, and you will work on those clues. And then on Saturday morning, the 24th, we have a three-hour virtual retreat, and we will pull all those clues together to create a beautiful map and I actually um, and I teach how to make a traveler's notebook out of an old book I used a, a, a copy of a Nancy Drew book which is super fun to do that and again I'm so happy awesome thank you Yvonne yes that's the goal is to let it lead and I just follow and isn't that the nature of working with intuition, with prayer, with our guides, whatever your, you know, personal beliefs are, this is just the ability to deepen our connection to ourself, right? To deepen our connection to ourself. And the more that we learn to listen to our inner wisdom, the more we understand that we already have all the answers, right? We already have access to all of the answers. And it's when we start asking too many other people for opinions, when we get really caught up in trying to overthink things instead of feel our way through them, we get lost. We get distracted. We get pulled off the truth of what's important to us. We get sidetracked from what really is most important. In reading this book, Essentialism, this morning, which is about business, <clears throat> not about art. So I had to take a break from your brain on art this morning to finish that up for a book discussion today. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, he asked these questions that I think are so powerful for us at any point in our life. I didn't really want that little bit of green in there. So let's get, bring some of this white back. And, uh, you know, what am I passionate about? most passionate about like I'm passionate about a lot of things but what am I most passionate about and I'm always most passionate about teaching and helping people really be on that journey of self-discovery and I've been that way since I was a kid I've been teaching these kind of classes in different forms for 30 years like when I look back at the tracks of things and like how they brought me to this point, that the path is always clearer than we think it is. So I'm always passionate about leading and facilitating groups, and I've become even more passionate about using art and creative process to do that. It used to be they were all writing-based. I was teaching a lot of poetry writing and nature journaling, all kinds of fun things. And so for me, it was essential to remember and in my first company my publishing company I got away from that teaching and I lost myself a little bit and reconnecting to my art was the thing that brought me back and so what are you most passionate about what can you be the best at and what is the world hungry for 
I love that question. What is the world hungry for? And if it's for you, it's not the world. What is your community? What is your family hungry for? We all want to show up in service in big ways, in small ways, in local ways, in global ways. And so these are just, these are the kind of questions that I ask myself all the time. I'm a little bit of a deep thinker, right? I'm just, you know, no, I would say I'm a lot of a deep thinker. So I'm thinking about these big questions all the time. And so are most of my clients. We're asking ourselves these big questions all the time. All right, so this is really lovely, exactly like it is. It feels like there's not a lot to be done. And now I'm thinking, okay, maybe it's not going to get a bird painting over the top of it. I don't know. <laughs> what I can tell you is I'm feeling very attached to this one. And um, it, this one is going to be a little bit trickier one for me to let go of and paint over. But I will. I will. And it's also going to get harder to paint over because it just, it has, you can see how much texture there is in the service. So it, it gets um, harder and harder when they have more texture. So I might allow this one to stay, but I always trust not to make a decision in the moment. Like I don't need to decide right now what it is that I want to do with this piece. It might get a little more gold. Looks like it painted over some of that gold. Really loving that gold. But I notice this is how what happens, right? When we have big ideas, we get really attached to our ideas, to our dreams, to our beliefs, to our stories. And I can feel my attachment, which means it's going to be really important to let go. And I think I'm really loving this because it feels like that wholeness, like all those disparate parts coming together. And that feels really good to have them all coming together. So somehow this is representing wholeness, integrity, maybe a little bit of authenticity, but definitely integrity in the definition and its true meaning of wholeness, right? Of being made up of all the parts. So all the chaos, the emotion, and the feelings of the last couple of days, this is what they came to today. I love it. I am going to stop there. So this is our last call for this week. Summer hours again are Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at 8 a.m. Mountain Time. So I will see you guys all next Tuesday. And remember, if you're on my email list, I also have a and Yvonne, I'll see your question. I'll answer in just a second. I have a live studio session next Wednesday at 4 p.m. Mountain Time in the afternoon. And Yvonne, usually I'm reading um, at least one fiction book. I'm always reading at least one fiction book. I read fiction every night before bed. And um, I usually then have something on my audio book. Sometimes the, the, the fiction is both the audio and the uh, reading book. I love audio books. And, um, and one nonfiction book at a time. And I do tend to go through them pretty fast. And uh, especially because I listen to so many books, I listen to books while I'm painting. If I'm walking by myself, I'll put an audio book on. So right now, I just finished a great fiction book by Susanna Kearsley. I love her. Her fiction is great, called The Vanishing Days. And I'm listening to You Are a Goddess which I'm loving the book, but not the audio. The reading isn't that great. So it's one that eventually I'll pick up in print because uh, it's a really, really lovely book. And then I'm also reading Your Brain on Art. So yeah, my head is full with all of the books that I'm reading. And I usually, like I said, mainly I have a fiction and a nonfiction one at a time that I'm reading. And today was different because I had to read this book for a book study this morning. So I have a couple of different books going right now. But yeah, I love to read. I've been an avid reader like since I was a kid, since I learned to read. I've had my head in a book. For the good and the bad of that, reading for me was often an escape. I spent a lot of time as a kid, you know, trying to hide out from my crazy family by having my head in a fiction book. I was in high school always reading and um, had a girlfriend and I, that we used to devour Harlequin romances for a while. We'd sit out by her pool and 
you know, read them. My stepmom, her mom read them and then she read them and then she would pass them on to me by the bag full. And so I often had stacks of those that I was reading. I love fantasy fiction and have devoured, you know, hours and hours and hours of reading over time. Unfortunately, I married a man who loves to read and loves fantasy fiction just as much as I do. So it influences a lot of my work. In fact, in the fall, I want to do a mythical makeover experience that's based on the Mist of Avalon series. So that's in the work too. Lots of fun, ju juicy goodness. Thank you everyone for joining me live. Thank you for catching the replay. I'm Dr. Minette Rard, and this is Painting in Your PJs with Minette. Be sure to hit that like button if you liked what I shared today so we can encourage other people to play along as well. And um, Leslie and Marion, I'll see you this weekend for the Beyond the Page retreat with Andrea Shebelu. Super excited about that. Have a beautiful rest of your day, a gorgeous weekend. I'll see you all next Tuesday. Bye-bye.